All right. Hello, everyone. Can everybody hear me well? Can I get a thumbs up? All right. Excellent. I'm just going to switch slide deck and start. And I'm recording, so which is the most important thing. Thank you, Matthew. Um, so that way we can just get going. So just give me two seconds. I think you would be familiar with the new interface, but we're not. Uh, <laughs> all good. I'm just going to switch slide mode. So yes, I've started the recording. Um, this is just my friendly reminder not to forget to record. People are going to hate me forever if I don't do that. Uh, so yeah, so well, welcome, everybody. Welcome to this uh, well Q1 2024 uh, event where, where we, we we played it like really at the last minute, but still we're in with, we're within the quarter. So uh, thanks for uh, thanks for uh, joining us. So we're gonna tackle the supercharger API game with Apigee and Juet AI. Uh, we'll have a, well we have like Emmanuel uh, Burgess uh, with uh, with us. Uh, I'll let him intro himself as we go uh, down the slide deck. Just wanted to. Cover the agenda. Well, a little intro housekeeping, um, asking uh, questions during the event, which actually changed. So we'll just go straight with what we see in the uh, the new interface. Um, and uh, then there's some uh, woman tech maker news. We'll tackle GCP news and then our main event. Of course, all the first bullets will be done fairly quickly, and then we'll we'll have the wrap up. So uh, just to keep on going. Um, there's no formal intro, just uh, Emmanuel can intro himself properly once we hit a section. So just like, who are your speakers? So I'm Stacey Verano. I work for SE Cloud Experts. That's not important here who we work for. The important thing is that we're able to bring you this event for the community uh, of Google. With me, there's uh, there's Uda. Hi, Uda. Always nice to uh, <laughs> see you. Hi, uh, happy to join. Yeah, always nice to see you in the little box, but uh, it was good also that we were able to meet in real life last time. <laughs> it was all good, always good. Uh, and Emmanuel, also like uh, joining us from uh, from Google. So uh, you'll have our OSINT speakers. Like I said, Emmanuel, we'll have, I'll give you the time to do a proper introduction um, just later on. So question, like, just forget, like, this slide is, like, awful. Basically, now everything has moved to the bottom of your, uh, your, your event. Um, your event page, so there's chat, DMs, participant, and all that. So you'll have also a Q&A section. Uh, so we can either answer chat live, like questions, or if you want to, I started the Q&A, so you can type in your question in there, and then um, you know we can moderate and either like answer straight there, or we'll be able to uh, answer uh, after. So uh, that's one slide I have to redo. So. First up, uh, Uda's going to talk about some women te tech maker news. So, uh, Uda? Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm super happy to be here. Thank you for joining. I just wanted to touch uh, a word about our Women Tech Makers Montreal event. So, it's been seven years now. Um, pretty established. We're super lucky to have an amazing team this year. And my point is really to give them a shout out. So, um, university students, uh, new um, uh, you know, young, uh, young professionals, they've been putting hours and hours into putting together a conference. And this will be happening on, um, on April 6th at ServiceNow in Montreal. You can uh, find, you can, so yesterday I realized the event is now sold out. However, we usually have uh, some people that uh, release tickets and we have some last minute tickets that we, get, we can release. So if you're interested, if you're in Montreal and want to attend, uh, it's a full day conference at ServiceNow. Um, amazing speakers, amazing venue. Uh, it's it's really cool if you're looking for a job, if you're looking for internships. That's your time to uh, to do so. So you can register on uh, the waiting list, and we'll make sure that uh, we get you some tickets to get in. That's that's pretty much it. I just wanted to touch a word, and then um, if you're not able to attend, you'll find all the recordings later on our YouTube channel. I'll I'll touch. Um, I'll give you a word about this once this is ready in the in the next meetup. That's it. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Uda. So we'll uh, just keep on going with some GCP news. And Stacey's having way too much fun with Gen AI to generate the logos. So full disclosure, of course, uh, all of those were done with um, some AI assistance. I am not way not that good to just like do those on my own. Um, so 
<laughs> but great assistance from uh, Ideogram. Uh, just a shout out. Ideogram runs on GCP, so we're good. So uh, all good. So just uh, the idea of GCP news for those who are uh, new to, uh, to this is just kind of a quick TLDR shout out of from all the blog posts and everything, stuff that I found personally uh, interesting. Um, and I think the community would found also interesting with the current context of what's hot, what's not, and where we're going. So a few things I wanted to cover, um, like uh, there are six or seven of those uh, where we're, uh, yeah, the, uh, the good old uh, cloud architecture framework. Uh, there's also uh, some new features around like service account keys I wanted to touch. Uh, there's the, the model garden uh, awesomeness from, uh, from Vertex AI where it's bringing uh, cloud the tree into, uh, into the fold, into the list of model there. Um, a little, a little um, information around Security Command Center. Security is something that's dear and dear to my heart, uh, especially when it comes to cloud. So um, happy to uh, tackle that. And also, well, to wrap up, kind of a like long segue from cloud architecture framework, which is uh, like the well, well architect framework, if you're more familiar with AWS, kind of the uh, GCP equivalent. Uh, there's also a uh, the SAFE or SIF. Uh, Google Secure AI Framework, uh, which is going to tackle that super high level. This is the TLDR. It's just to get you excited for each of those slides. Um, it's it's one slide. Uh, per, you have the QR code, so don't try to find somewhere that are like 25 feet long. Uh, we're just going to give you the uh, the information. Uh, why did I put that in there? Uh, there's and this is some, not something that's new. The Google Cloud Architecture Framework. Uh, it's something that's that's been there for for a while that focuses on all of those pillars. Uh, this gentleman who actually made a seven-part uh, medium article post that covers kind of in the TLDR way. Watch our uh, each of those pillars from like the overview to design, then to ops to performance optimization. Article seven is the one that was released. So the QR code will bring you to the last article. The, because that article actually brings you the link to the first six. So if you want to know more on um, what you call it, the GCAF, uh, basically, um, and how to like work with reliability, monitoring, cost optimization, which is always super important, um, by following Google best practices, uh, this is where uh, you should go and have a look. So that's less sexy with more text and less graphic, but just the TLDR of this is that uh, right now there is uh, there, there is something uh, that, that exists uh, within GCP. And it, of course it ties to security. Um, it's if there's a, a service account that's been exposed to uh, because you're not to work using workload identity, you actually need a service account key and it's been exposed, let's say for GitHub or something, then Google right now was able to notify you on some integration it's now something now that actually has uh, you have an org policy you can put in place and you can leverage uh, one of those constraints saying that, well, if the service account key is exposed or tag is exposed for, let's say, on, on GitHub, um, then just disable it. So you could do that. Uh, it's uh, and again, it's going to be based on some reporting. It's probably not going to be like 98%, 99%. 100% accurate all the time. It's still an, a, a strong 90% plus of making sure everything is deactivated. So that's like, I would say like the default behavior. And the other one, it's, uh, it's called a wait for abuse, which I found kind of weird <laughs> for a flag. But anyway, uh, this what happens is that's like, yes, it's been exposed, but nothing is happening right now. But as soon as something happens, we'll notify your security contact and your contact essential when you, did, when you set up your console. So the only thing there is that you have to make sure that the security contact actually looks for this and acts like right now to deactivate the service account. Uh, that's the only thing. But that's something that's there. There um, is some of the behaviors will become like on by default. So just wanted to uh, state that out. So uh, going from uh, security and, and IAM permission and constraint to uh, uh, to AI, uh, we have to talk AI, so we don't have a choice. Uh, so um, basically, I wanted to talk about the uh, the cloud tree model uh, that was that's are now on Vertex AI, and it's not for like cloud tree, which is coming from Entropic, which is uh, somebody that Google is working with also. 
but it's the fact that like when you're leveraging Vertex AI within GCP, you're not bound to, oh, I just have to use the Google stuff. Uh, you can use uh, Llama 2, you can use uh, Cloud Tree, you can use Gemma, which is Gemini, but like the open source uh, side of things, you can use Hugging Face. Um, so it's just to tell you that now like this, this new model, which is like the oddest one before another one comes in uh, is available also in the model garden in Vertex AI. So you can leverage those as your base LLM and then build your own on top of. Um, so wanted to stay that out. If you want to know more on the article itself and Entropic and the, the, the cloud LLM, you have the QR code. Um, security Command Center. Um, Segue to uh, Vertex AI is that, well, you know, you, you create your model, you create, uh, you work with uh, Vertex AI Workbench. Uh, you know, sometimes they have public IPs. There's multiple things going on uh, when you're playing with models and whatever you're doing with them. Uh, so there, uh, there's been an addition to Security Command Center for everybody who should have turned on at least the free version. Please do that. Um, just go in security. It's the first. You can go at the org level. You turn it on. You started to see some stuff. Um, so just keep, keep that in mind. Uh, but now there are actually findings related to AI workloads. So they will start uh, actually popping up in Security Command Center. So that gives you that little extra of security. Again, just wanted to uh, state that out and um, give you the, uh, the QR code so you can uh, just scan and go and uh, learn a bit more. And continuing in that uh, Security Command Center uh, piece, Security Command Center has been like uh, like upgraded uh, with an enterprise version, which brings you the same thing as the Security Command Center, um, let's say full version or premium, um, which is able at the project or the org level. But now it's something that goes even further where Security Command Center can actually now start ingesting signals from sources outside of GCP, which is the big transformation for Security Command Center. So that's a big play for anybody who is looking at other solution because we're doing multi-cloud, but I would love to have everything in Google for the security piece. Um, so uh, for your, your CSPM that can actually ingest more, then now you have that possibility uh, with Security Command Center Enterprise. I didn't want this to be a sales pitch, just wanted, this is a cool feature that's coming up. Uh, it's been announced, so uh, it's gonna be within Q2. Um, so just keep that in mind if you uh, ever wanted to ingest stuff from Azure and AWS and bring it those signals into uh, GCP. Uh, and just to wrap up uh, the uh, the security framework. Uh, so basically, it's a conceptual framework that uh, Google came in regards to whatever uh, uh, we do in AI. So the same way there's respons responsible AI, responsible AI is bound to a framework. That's the framework itself. Just to give you an idea, so those is based on six core elements, which is our those one. Um, so basically, uh, you know, strong security foundation making sure that you're able to uh, uh, you know, detect and bring response to, uh, to anything, I would say, uh, uh, from the whatever bad actors that are out there, uh, you know, automate the defense. Again, that, would, that falls like in the same thing you would do like a SIM and a SOAR in security, but think about that in, in AI. If there's anything weird happening within that, that framework, we need to remediate. Um, and um, you know, adjust the control, mitigate, and also be able to contextualize uh, the system as a whole. So it's, I'm not an AI scientist, it probably shows while I, I'm, I'm talking through the slide, but just wanted to bring that up to attention. And we go back, so the QR code is there. Just wanna make sure in terms of security, um, oh, can I get the SCC Enterprise link again? I mean, like this one, uh, here you go, Chuck. Um, so <laughs> the QR code, um, so, um, and that's of course like this will be recorded and and put uh, in our site um, right uh, right after the event, so you'll be able to uh, go there. So uh, Chuck, I hope, yep, you got it, perfect, uh, excellent. So that was me wrapping things up quite quickly. I'm gonna bring it back to Emmanuel, to our main speaker. Uh, I hope you like the logo. <laughs> uh, I think it was pretty cool uh, to get this generated and actually bang on with the text without a mistake the first time. So, uh, so yeah. So I'll I'll let you in the good hands of Emmanuel, who's gonna uh, walk us through our main topic today. So I'll stop sharing so you can start sharing, and um, put myself on mute. So stop sharing, and then you should be able to share on your end, Emmanuel. 
and you're on mute yourself. My bad. So first of all, I love the logo. Logo is really dope. <laughs> uh, really great job on that. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen here. Uh, give me one second. I have to put this in presentation mode. No problem. All righty. Cool. All right. So let me share now. <clears throat> Just wanted to call out uh, our friend uh, Ahmed uh, Williams, who is the one who is actually uh, was able to get us uh, Emmanuel for this talk. So we were looking for a speaker. Uh, reached out at the within the uh, DevRel community, uh, and I met uh, delivered. <laughs> so, thanks, I met again, uh, Emmanuel. Floor is yours. Yeah, absolutely. So, look, guys, I, I'm excited to be here. So, I'm honored to be here with such uh, smart people. Um, and so, I kind of feel like I'm the least smartest person in the room. But uh, thank you guys for joining. And so, you may know I don't look like the cartoon that was my picture, but. Uh, this is me. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Burgess. And so today uh, we're going to talk about supercharging your API game with Apigee and Duet AI. So let me see. Uh, did it go to the next slide? Or is it? Not? It did. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, so this is me, right? So my name is Emmanuel Burgess. I do have a forehead. It got, it got cut off in the picture. But um, I am a developer advocate for Google Cloud, right? So uh, that means that I evangelize, I do talks, uh, just like today. I do events, I do workshops. I also do conferences. I hope to see you guys at Google Next coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, if you're there, maybe we can hang out. Um, I empathize, so I help discover pain points for the developer, and then I uh, advocate internally for the developer uh, to reduce those pain points or to alleviate those pain points. And then I also write code, right? So I create documents and uh, code samples showcasing the power of Google Cloud products. Now, I do live in Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta. I'm from South Carolina. Um, I live in a town called McDonough. So that's about like 30 minutes outside of Atlanta. Um, and uh, I'm married. I have two kids. We have a, a dog, a turtle, and we have seven guinea pigs. So um, my house is always full of, of, of random stuff always going on. So, but, so that's a little about me. And like I said, I'm, I'm really happy to, to be here. So let's talk about APIs, right? So what are APIs and why should you care about them? Which is a valid question, right? So if you're going to be here wasting your time, I want to make sure that you guys can get value out of this presentation. So by the time that we're done, right, you should be able to, um, understand what Apigee is, how you can implement Apigee to manage APIs throughout your enterprise organization, um, how can customers uh, and uh, producers alike get value out of Apigee. Um, and then also we're going to look at the star of the show, which is Duet AI. Like how can we leverage Duet AI um, to speed up the velocity at which we create these APIs um, for the customers and also internal customers and external customers um, to consume, right? So what are APIs, right? So APIs are mechanisms that power connected digital experiences, right? They allow applications and services to exchange information. Now, um, when we talk about uh, APIs. APIs are critical to any digital ecosystem and their use is exploding, right? Um, so about 82% of organizations with mature API programs reported an increase in efficiency from using APIs in the past 12 months, right? So now that's a large number. Now, because of this increased efficiency, uh, we see like over a 200% growth rate of APIs on average, um, reported by those organizations within the last 12 months, right? So um, API usage is expanding and it's, it's exploding as well, right? So, and when you really think about APIs, APIs are everywhere, right? Uh, APIs provide simplified entry points to application logic and data. Um, APIs also enable developers to easily access and reuse business logic by other developers. And so um, in the current state of, of IT, 
uh, when we build an application, most applications today are really complex. Why is that? Uh, that's because they use multiple services, right? And so they integrate with multiple services, right? So APIs are the backbone that connects uh, the application to these multiple services, right? And so as we build more complex and modern applications, we're going to rely on APIs uh, to help power these uh, connected digital experiences, right? So we, as an end result, right, we want our customer to have a seamless experience, right? So if I were to go on a travel website, uh, I'm able to uh, use a calendar. I'm able to search for all the airline providers. I'm able to book my flight. I'm able to get an email and I'm able to modify that reservation. All of that stuff is powered by API. So um, as we modernize our applications, we need a more comprehensive solution, right, to manage these APIs at scale. And so here's where Apogee comes in, at, right? So how can Apogee help your enterprise manage their APIs? So um, at a very high level, um, Apogee is uh, Google Cloud's API management solution. Now you're gonna hear me use these three words a lot today. Uh, that helps you <laughs> build, manage, and secure, right? All of your uh, APIs, right? So um, let's take a, a, a closer look at Apogee. I'm sorry, I'm turning off this. Monitor is flashing in my face. Okay, maybe I'm not turning off this monitor. Let me turn it to the side. Okay, so um, the first point, uh, Apogee is good for any use case, and that's because Apogee is flexible, right? So whether you're using your APIs for like microservices or to expose, I don't know, maybe a mobile application, um, or if you want to monetize, right, your API product, you want to um, charge people for using your business logic. Uh, maybe you want to de deploy a multi-cloud strategy or a hybrid uh, environment strategy, right? Apogee is flexible and Apogee can meet all of those needs. Um, Apogee is also reliable to you know, the second point, right? Apogee's runtime is built to support API transactions at any scale. And with that, you get comprehensive monitoring. Uh, you get analytics to ensure uh, that your APIs are, are working reliably, right? And then uh, it protects against every attack, right? We were just talking about security, um, and we're going to go a little bit into security um, later on in this call because, as you can imagine, as uh, you know, APIs are being generated at a, a prolific rate, um, it brings some new security challenges, right? But even if you're facing security challenges, Apogee has you covered. Uh, Apogee has a comprehensive security. Uh, control to protect your APIs, your backend services, um, and your data from malicious attacks and threats. Uh, advanced API security enables you to become more proactive uh, with the security by uh, automatically identifying uh, bots and misconfigurations uh, in your APIs. And Apogee's for the developer, right? Apogee is a developer tool, right? Um, and so Apogee makes it easy to find APIs from within the universal catalog. Um, you have developer portals, which um, can expose your API to consumers who want to consume your API. Um, and APIs uh, with Apogee are flexible. You can do REST APIs, you can do SOAP, you can do GraphQL, and the list goes on, right? So once again, I told you guys you're going to hear these three words a lot, but um, Apogee makes it easy for uh, the, uh, your developer and platform teams to build govern and operate APIs effectively, right? Uh, so what does that mean? We're going to look at each of these sections one by one, right? So let's talk about um, the build part of APIs. How can Apogee help your organization build APIs? Um, by show of hands or emojis, do we have any um, uh, DevOps people on the call by any chance? Anybody DevOps? Okay, Boris, I see you, okay. Right, so um, in a lifetime prior to this, I was a, a DevOps engineer. I did consulting for several years, right? And in consulting, uh, my job was to automate all the things as a DevOps engineer, right? Um, and so that looked like a lot of pipelines, right? And so uh, this part of the presentation specifically talks to uh, DevOps engineers, right? So. Off, or platform engineers too, doesn't just have to be limited to DevOps or let me make that broader, anybody who interacts with 
uh, pipelines, right? Uh, so oftentimes we think of software products, uh, when we think of software products, we think of traditional uh, applications or digital platforms uh, that a customer will eventually consume. But um, I want to, to also let you know that APIs um, are also products too. They're software products. They're mechanisms, software mechanisms that power these digital uh, experiences, and they should be treated as such, which means that uh, just like you do any other software, um, you can use uh, or leverage CI CD pipelines to deliver APIs to your internal customers or to your external customers. Now, I would also argue that automating uh, API uh, production using pipelines uh, makes API uh, the build easier and the deployment easier. And it also makes it easier to manage uh, these APIs at scale. And so within Apogee, you get tools like environments, proxies, and policies to enable your API development. So what is an environment? Like, let's talk about it. So an environment is just like it sounds, right? It's an isolated um, area where an organization uh, can deploy create and test proxies, right? And if you're familiar with the software development lifecycle, you know that you test these codes in these various environments uh, to get the bugs out, and then you eventually release it into a production environment. Well, Apogee also gives you environments that you can deploy and test your APIs in. Um, now, what is a proxy, right? So in Apogee, you can expose your APIs by implementing proxies. Uh, proxies allow you to decouple the app-facing API from your backend services um, and that gives you some protections like shielding your applications um, and um, your backend code changes. And so uh, your customer, nine times out of 10, they don't even notice any, any downtime. Now, uh, once you build an environment, you can define your APIs using code, um, adding automated testing like unit testing, testing, static code analysis, all the things that we're going to talk about here pretty soon. Um, it allows you to create these pipelines that you can use to deliver uh, these APIs to uh, whoever your customer may be. Um, and so if we take a look at the slide, right, the standard software development lifecycle, um, this is kind of what it looks like. You have all these tools um, that you can use um, in your software development lifecycle, um, and you can integrate Apogee with this to release and build uh, your APIs. Right. So what does just a basic API pipeline look like? Right. So um, if we take a look at this picture, uh, you have Maven. Right. So maybe you're using some type of static code analysis tool. Um, and if that step passes, right, um, you'll do some unit testing and then you get a grade with code coverage. Um, if you're building multiple APIs, you can bundle those into a product um, and then you can do some additional testing and then you can eventually push this out. Uh, after the build has been successful, right? So Apogee enables you to treat your APIs as the software products that they are. Now you can integrate Apogee, like I said, into your CI CD process. I mean, you can use codes like uh, uh, tools like API Lint or Apogee Lint. Um, you can use that for static code analysis. You can use like Maven Deploy plugin uh, to deploy bundles to Apogee. You can use the Apogee CLI. Um, you can use different various test frameworks, but uh, the point that I'm trying to make is when you're building out um, your pipelines, right, there's tools available that you can use that enable you to treat your APIs as the software products that they are. Um, and Apogee um, provides this, these toolings for you to be able to automate the API production, right? So now we're talking about code, right? We're talking about building pipelines, but how do I keep my code dry, right? How do I uh, reuse code um, in these pipelines? So let's go a step further, right? So let's talk about policies and policies in Apogee, right? So let's say I've went ahead, I've a couple proxies, um, and my team has identified patterns and behaviors that I want to share across multiple APIs, right? So let's say, um, I'm using policies, but what? first of all, what are policies, right? So policies enable you to program API behavior without writing any additional code. So a policy is like a module um, that implements a specific function. And so you can see here, um, uh, policies pretty much come in four different flavors, right? So you have like mediation. So the policies um, that are related to mediation enable you to actively manipulate 
messages as they flow through your proxies, your API proxies, right? So they enable you to transform message formats. Uh, so you can go to XML or JSON or JSON to XML or vice versa, right? So <clears throat> why would you use this, right? So maybe uh, my API needs to be compatible with the JavaScript app. So in that case, it may make more sense for me to convert <clears throat> an XML response to JSON, right? To be compatible uh, with the app that will be consuming my API. Um, we also have traffic management policies, right? So policies in the traffic man management category uh, and enable you to control the flow of requests and responses through the actual proxy. So maybe I want to enforce consumption limits on client apps to save, you know, on calls, right? Computational calls. Um, I can use a quota to manage that traffic. Uh, let's talk about security. Um, and we'll talk about a different type of security later, but let's talk about security as it relates to policies. Maybe I want to enforce consumption limits on client applications. Um, um, I'm sorry, that was for um, the traffic management security. Uh, maybe I want to add like some type of authentication. Maybe I want to add an API key to my API, right? I want someone to authenticate who they are before they can access my business logic, right? So um, I can use, in that case, I can use a security policy. Um, and so you also have extensions, right? So these policies uh, in Apogee uh, allow you to create if you're creating your own custom policy or reuse logic um, within your, your API creation, right? So what does that look like at a high level, right? So in Apogee, you have an organization, right? Um, so um, you can combine policies and resources into what's called a shared flow. Um, now these shared flows can be consumed from multiple API proxies. Um, and they can even be consumed from other shared flows, right? So shared flows are created at the organizational level. Um, and so you can call a shared flow or you can access the logic in a shared flow by using what's called a flow callout policy. Um, and so why should I use shared flows, right? So maybe I have some functionality um, that I want to standardize across the organization um, when we build these APIs, right? So maybe I have like security, um, I wanna, you know, Always, every time I build an API, I want to I want to have an authorization code using OAuth or some type of API key verification. I don't know. Uh, maybe I want to have logging as standard within my APIs, right? Um, for generating standard error messages. Maybe I want to uh, do a conversion uh, with the response, right? So maybe I want to use a mediation policy, and I want to make that a standard process. Um, in my API creation, right? So this is why we would use um, these shared flow, right? Shared flows allows you to share these policies and resources across APIs. And that allows you to keep your APIs dry, right? So you don't repeat yourself. You can reuse the code. It saves, saves time with the development, right? It increases, increases velocity um, because you don't have to write the policies over and over and over again. And it's just a good practice to use whenever you're building your APIs. So what tools does Apogee offer to help our developers? I'm glad you guys asked me that question. So let's look at a typical developer flow, right? So um, as a developer, if I were developing an API, um, the first thing that I would probably need to do is create a spec, right? Um, and so um, VS Code has a plugin called uh, Cloud Code that you can use uh, to build your APIs in Apogee, right? Um, and so a typical developer flow, uh, I would get the uh, I would develop code in the IDE. In this case, in our case, it's going to be VS Code. I would do some tests in the IDE, then I would push my code to a repo. Um, some type of source code repository. Um, and then in most cases, um, that would uh, trigger or create a pull request. Now, once the pull request gets reviewed and approved, that would automatically kick off a pipeline, right? So this is a typical developer flow. Um, and so now the question comes up, how can we help our developers be more productive when they're building these APIs? And so, like I said before, Google Cloud offers a uh, cloud code plugin. So during uh, the development process, um, we can use Apogee in cloud code to develop APIs and verify the functionality 
um, through unit testing and manual testing using an actual emulator. So Apogee within this specific um, plugin has an uh, Apogee emulator. So it's a Docker container or, or running in Docker uh, that allows you to test your um, APIs, right? You can also create workspaces in um, Code Cloud. Um, and a workspace contains all like a skeleton uh, directory structure that you can use to develop and build your APIs. Um, you can also integrate it with um, Google Cloud repositories, uh, GitHub, or any other source code repository that you're using as well. Um, and so developers are really leaning more into this tool. Um, it actually grew. The number of developers using this tool grew 60% uh, to 4.1 million developers in 2021, right? Um, and so, I mean, you just get a lot of great tools out of this. Um, it speeds up uh, the velocity at which you can test um, and deploy and push code to your repository when you're building um, these APIs. All right, so now the star of the show, right? So let's talk about Duet AI. So uh, generative AI, we all know. I mean, we're all in IT. It's all the rage right now, right? So uh, Apogee has a product, uh, or Duet AI for Apogee is a product that allows you to leverage generative AI to speed up your development process, right? So you can access Apogee using the uh, Cloud Code plugin. Um, and you can also use that plugin within various IDEs. Like it doesn't just have to be VS Code. Um, it's compatible with, with all the top common IDEs, right? And so what are some benefits, right? So what are some benefits from using um, Duet AI for Apogee, right? In our case, we're going to be looking at VS Code, right? Um, so when you're using this tool, you all, you it's like you have an apparent programmer sitting beside you, right? Um, Duet AI can find inconsistencies and recommend improvements by highlighting errors um, in your syntax, right? So if you're creating a, a, a API spec, um, and there's some um, additional spaces or um, the syntax is off, right? Uh, the tool is smart enough to highlight those syntax, uh, those syntax errors and uh, help you modify it. So it's like you got another pair of eyes coding with you. Um, now, you can also create API specifications from requirements um, using, nat using natural language processing. And so in our demo today, if we have time, we're going to take a look at that. We're actually going to generate um, an open spec um, using uh, Duet AI um, in Apogee. Um, and if you're new to uh, APIs and you don't know what a spec is, so a spec is like a standardized document that explains how an API should function and how the data exchange between applications should work, right? Now, using Duet AI for Apogee saves time um, because building API specifications usually take um, a large amount of time, right? So by using uh, Duet AI for Apogee, you're actually speeding up your development time. Um, and we'll see an example of that here in the next couple of minutes uh, when we do our demo. So what about governance, right? Um, if we take a look at this flywheel, right? Um, we talked about the build process or using, using tools in Apogee to build your APIs. Now let's talk about using tools in Apogee to govern your APIs. Uh, so first of all, when we say API governance, right, what do we mean? So governance, uh, more specifically, API governance is the process of managing, monitoring, and maintaining APIs. Now, API governance helps promote reliability. Uh, it helps promote consistency and security across all the APIs in your organization. So what does that look like at a high level? That, that can mean like, hey, I want to define some standards. Um, I want to uh, create some policies to force enforce, uh, you know, compliance. I want to um, have guidelines for API design, development, and deployment, right? So that may look like constructing, testing, documenting, approving, and publishing your APIs. So now I want to ask you a question, like, how well do you understand the APIs in your company? Right. So usually when we talk about uh, APIs in enterprises, they usually fall into four categories. Right. So the first category are good quality APIs. These APIs are discoverable. Uh, they're usable. They're up to date. They're secure. And everybody knows about them. Right. Uh, the, the perfect example of how APIs should be. 
Next, we have um, APIs that are discoverable and they're also well documented, um, but we really don't know if they're up to date or if they're secure, right? This is the second category. The third category is um, we have APIs that are discoverable, right? Um, and we can understand them, but they're not well maintained. They're not, they're not up to date, right? So they may also have like reliability issues. And then we have discoverable APIs, but they're not easily understand or understood or usable, right? So maybe they're poorly documented. Maybe they're not up to date. Maybe they're not obvious. Um, but then we also have a fifth category. I say it four, but there's also a fifth category. Another category um, is we have invisible APIs, and these are the worst of all, right? So <laughs> invisible APIs cannot be easily discovered. Now, with many organizations, um, there's a challenge because as the number of APIs increase, um, how do we track these APIs? They become harder to track, right? Um, and so this would cause duplication issues, right? This would cause um, cost us money because it's expensive if you're um, creating the same resource over and over and over again. So when APIs proliferate without any design standards and governance checks, the API landscape grows and it becomes inconsistent. And it also slows teams down and also costs your company money. So how do we fix it? Fix this? What tool does Apogee offer uh, that we can use to fix this? So now within Apogee, we have a tool called API Hub. Um, so what is API Hub? API Hub is a tool that enables you to consolidate and organize information um, about all of the APIs within your organization. Um, it also includes uh, APIs at all stages. So you can track the life cycle of your API uh, within API Hub from design to implementation through even depreciation and retirement. So uh, your internal developers can go to, to the API Hub and see whether, you know, you're, you guys are even using the API. Has it been retired? Has it been depreciated? Is it deployed in production? API Hub allows you to track the life cycle of that API. Um, and also it makes um, APIs easy to discover, right? All the APIs are in one place and it's documented. They're, they're easy to discover. <clears throat> and so platform teams can use API Hub as a central location or a central portfolio for all the APIs. Now, if I'm a developer, I'm going to like API Hub because I can discover and explore APIs, the full inventory. I can quickly find APIs. If they're easily exposed. I can... Um, easily add APIs. Uh, and so API Hub minimizes duplication, right? So it saves me time, it saves the company money. Um, and it allows me to also understand what are the standards that I have to follow when creating APIs. Um, and I also, can also use it to identify API dependencies as well, right? Um, and so that's API Hub, right? So now let's talk about monetization, right? Um, I work at a company, I've created a, a great API, and now I want to create an additional stream of business revenue, right? Uh, I wanna get paid for consumers accessing uh, my business logic if I'm a company. Um, and like I said, this creates a new stream of revenue. And so a Apogee allows you to monetize your API. As an API provider, you need an easy way and a flexible way to monetize your API so you can generate revenue whenever someone consumes or whenever someone calls that API. Um, and using Apogee's monetization feature, you can add a rate plan uh, to an API product. An API product is a bundle of APIs that a customer can consume. Now, this rate plan lets you charge the developers for using your APIs. Um, and you can also configure a rate plan um, if you want to even share the API revenue with your developers, right? So um, Apogee allows you to monetize your APIs. It allows you to have a new uh, stream of income in your business. And this is easily all done through the console uh, within Apogee. So let me pause again by show of hands. How many people do we have uh, that work in operations? Has anyone ever worked in operations? Let me switch my tab. Anyone ever worked in operations at all? Okay, Stacy, did y'all still with me? Any operations people? Okay, cool. I worked in operations too. I really didn't enjoy my time there. However, I'm not an operations person. Um, but 
uh, Apogee also uh, helps you with operations of your APIs, right? So when we talk about operations, right, we're talking mainly about monitoring and alerting, right? So um, Apogee has a tool um, called Advanced API Analytics that provides actionable insights into API security. So we can automate <clears throat> anomaly detection and alerting. Apogee offers like this analytics dashboard that you can use to get more insight about what your APIs are doing. Um, this helps reduce the business impact of security incidents by providing actionable insights to quickly identify them and precisely diagnose the root cause. So if you're having issues with your APIs, um, you can use this analytics to, to figure out, you know, what exactly is going on with your APIs. Now, these dashboards show information about uh, like the API call volume, the location, the developer engagement, all of the other value that your business would need. Um, so you can also create your own dimensions from business data and pull them into your own custom reports um, as well. And so uh, advanced uh, API analytics uh, uses uh, AI and machine learning technologies um, to deliver this dashboard for you. Um, you can reduce false alerts by triggered static thresholds, and you can create flexible variance limits as well. All right. So what about um, monitoring? We talked about learning. What about monitoring? So Technical monitoring of API traffic allows you to view API volume spikes or drops. Uh, Apogee has an API monitoring feature that proactively indicates where, the, uh, where your attention is needed. Um, it also supports like alerting and heat maps as well. And you can monitor all your APIs to create your own group of APIs uh, that can be monitored in specific ways, right? So monitoring allows for real-time monitoring of metrics and, and Tele telemetry um, integrated with the GCP monitoring. Uh, you can drill down into metrics to get more analytics. You can integrate it with uh, PagerDuty, Slack, uh, get email alerts. Um, also, you can plug in Cloud Trace for distributed tracing as well. All right, so now let's talk about the developer portal. Um, and hopefully I have time to do my demo, but um, I'll try to speed this along. So what about the developer portal, right? So APIs now, so we've built our APIs. We know about monitoring. We know about alerting. Um, now these APIs that we built using our pipelines need to be published, right? Um, after APIs are built, they need to be published. But why is this, right? So a developer portal addresses issues like how do I onboard my customers, right? How do I make them aware aware of the value of uh, my APIs? Like what values do my APIs offer? Um, how can they use my APIs, right? If I'm monetizing my APIs, they can also see pricing information in the developer portal, right? So uh, the developer portal allows you to publish your APIs for consumption. Now, this developer portal is like the shop um, that, or um, a store that your consumers can go to to see all of your API products. Now, it's also a place where documentation can be published and self-service, and it can be managed. Um, excuse me. It's self-service and it can be managed and it can be accessed by your uh, consumers. Now, the developer portal also helps bring your API products to market, right? So a customer managed approach uh, built on top of Drupal, a powerful open source content management system, the developer portal gives you full control over aspects um, of your store, right? Uh, we can supply and support modules and integrate uh, powerful content man system management with Apogee via APIs. Now, both the integrated portal and also you can create a Drupal portal um, leverages Apogee's APIs, right? So this portal is the place where your consumers would go to view your APIs, get more information about your APIs, understand how your APIs work. And if you're monetizing your APIs, um, they can go there to get um, pricing information about those APIs as well. Okay, so now, we know about the portal, we know about uh, building pipelines, we know about monitoring, we know about alerting, we know about policies, we know about shared flows. Um, so now, after my API is in place, how do I continuously monitor the API, right? And some people refer to this as shifting right, right? How do I 
um, monitor my API after my proxy, you know, my API and everything is in place, right? So now, um, Apogee orders this tool called, uh, offers this tool called advanced security. Now with the rapid growth of API uses and consumption, um, API security attacks are on the rise, right? And I don't know if you guys are familiar with OWASP, but, but OWASP has a top 10. Um, and within that top 10, they tell you like the top 10 security risks um, for specifically for APIs. Now with advanced security, um, you can remediate all of those um, security risks using advanced security, right? So I'm talking about like uh, authentication issues, uh, broken object level authorization, broken authentication, all of these things are uh, attack vectors for APIs. Um, so how can you gain insight about the health and security of your APIs? How can you visual visualize data and get in-depth analysis of security threats of your APIs, right? Um, what if you can get notifications about advanced security detected events related to your APIs, right? Uh, advanced security continuously monitors your APIs to protect them from security threats. Advanced API security analyzes your traffic to identify a suspicious API request and provides tools to block or flag those requests. Um, advanced API security also evaluates your API configurations to ensure that they meet security standards. Also advanced API security gives you recommendations for improving your security posture as it relates to APIs if needed. And so that's my whole spiel on Apogee, the tools in Apogee. Now let's take a look at a demo. And so um, let's say uh, I work at this company called Simple Eats, right? So Simple Eats is an eatery, um, customer shop for food items on the Simple Eats menu and orders food through the mobile or web front end. Uh, once the order is placed, the customer can track the order progress at a current status, um, and they can always see if they're, you know, the status of their item and make sure that it's up to date. Now, the application offers an employee front end. Uh, the chef can monitor orders. Uh, the chef can also update orders when the food is prepared, and the inventory manager can add new items as needed, right? So I'm, I, I work on the team, right? This is my second job. I do this at night. Um, I'm a developer at Simple Eats. Now, I have a DevOps engineer. He's responsible for, for creating um, all the pipelines to build and test and deploy my APIs. And then I have a director who just pretty much just tells me what to do all day, right? So um, I don't know why there are cartoons and I'm not, but that's just how the company is set up. Um, so I, I am responsible for building out the API specs for the company. Now let's take a look at how the architecture look, right? So um, with Symbol Ease, this is what our architecture looks like, right? So now, my job is to expose the menu service. Now, the menu service uh, relates to the menu and the items on that specific menu. So I want to use Apogee. I want to put Apogee in front of my backend, which is my menu service, um, because I want to create and build the pipelines for the API. I want to publish and document uh, my API so customers can access the business logic for their service menu. Um, I also want to get reports and analytics for my API traffic. And then I also want to monetize this API, right? So now we know from the presentation that we can use Apogee to do all of this, right? We we know that we can use environments. Uh, we can use policies to, you know, build these pipelines. We can integrate these pipelines into our CI CD process. We can use uh, the developer portal uh, to publish the APIs for the consumers who want to consume the these APIs. We can use API Hub uh, for uh, our internal team to see what APIs are out there. Uh, we can use uh, advanced ad analytics. Um, we can even add security uh, if we wanted to. Um, and then we are, can also monetize this, right? So if I want to get all of these benefits out of my API, um, I need to put Apogee in front of my API um, or my backend, which would be my menu service. Now, in order for me to do that, the first thing that I have to do is create a spec, right? So let me stop sharing this screen and I'm gonna share my VS code really quickly. Um, and then I'll speed along because I know I don't I don't want to run over. I definitely want to respect your time. Give me one second here. Um...
Okay, so we can only share uh, tabs on here, uh, Stacey. We can't share applications. Uh, yeah, you can share a tab. You can share, uh, yeah, you can share a Chrome tab, a screen, or a um, a specific window, but not an app. Hmm. You would have to go full screen if you want to share the um, your VS Code. All right, cool. Let me let me close some of this stuff, and I'll, I'll go full screen here. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I'm so used to Google Meet. Uh, let me see here. All right, so let me exit out of presentation mode. And let me go to make sure I have any pressing things up. Uh, hmm. All right, cool. I think we're good. All right, so I'm going to share my screen really quick and then I'll wrap up and then I'll take any questions that you guys may have. So I'm going to share my entire window. Okay, can you guys see my window? Yep, we're in the inception mode. We're <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you guys see VS Code? Uh, no, we're we're seeing the uh, bevy. You're we're on your supercharged API uh, tab. Okay, so maybe this isn't working like I thought. Okay, let me stop my share. Huh. Try that again. How about now? Can you guys see VS Code? Uh, nope. <laughs> Still the same window. Okay, so maybe we're gonna scratch the demo. So <laughs> I I will send you guys a uh, a link to a demo and also articles. But let me let me go back to my presentation. Uh, I'm sorry about that, guys. Kind of sucks a little bit, but that's okay. We'll we'll work around that. Uh, okay. Let me... Yeah, and if you uh if you uh oh, if, if your demo is really short and you want to just like record it in a and I can just put back the link to people uh, after, like if you want to record it in solo and then just I'll, something that we can do also. Okay, yeah, no, I, I think that's an amazing idea. So thank you for that. And that's probably what I'll do. Um, so the, the demo is just really showing um, Duet AI and also Apogee. And so how to use a natural language prompt to um, build an API spec, right? And, and then you would take that API spec and directly from within VS Code, you can send that API spec to API Hub. Um, and from API Hub, you can use that spec to build um, an API proxy um, with Apogee. But I will do a demo of that, and I'll send it to you guys as well. Um, let me share my screen again. All right, so um, these are some. So I just hit some of the main features in Apogee. Now, Apogee is the end of is an amazing enterprise product with multiple tools that you can use to manage, build, and govern your APIs. Um, but so here are some links, and I'll put these in the chat uh, that you guys can use to um, learn more about um, Apogee. So there's some links in like my Medium channel. Um, I have some blog posts that I've also created about Apogee. Um, and so I, I'll, I'll link these to you guys. And look, I want to connect. Like if you guys want to add me on LinkedIn, I think that'll be cool. We can collaborate. If any of you guys are going to next, I would love to sit down and talk with you to see, you know, what you think about Apogee. And if you're using Apogee, how you're using it uh, within your organization as well. Um, so let me stop. Any questions, comments, or concerns about the presentation and Apogee and about my demo not working? Uh, so far... Boris says it's great, so Boris is always happy. So I of course, know. I appreciate that, man. Thank, you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, man. Oh, you do use Apogee, Boris. I want to connect with you, man. Uh, let me. Uh, okay, so someone asked a question about pricing, right? So um, let me give you the link to Apogee's pricing. So Apogee just uh, released new pay-as-you-go pricing. Um, uh, I actually had that before. I had to close on my window, so I apologize. But um, Apogee has a couple pricing models. You can try it free. So with Apogee, you can create you an evaluation organization, and that lets you try Apogee free for um, 60 days. You have pay as you go, and then you also have subscription pricing. So I'm going to drop this link uh, here as well. 
So let me know if you can access that as well. But um, multiple pricing structures to meet multiple needs, depending on what your enterprise needs, right? Um, I like Apogee because it's more than just the API gateway, right? You get all these additional features like analytics, security, um, you know, this concept of environments where you can actually use uh, CI, CD to deliver your APIs. And that's that's dope to me because I am a, a DevOps guy. So everything my life for years has been all pipelines. And so um, coming over to Apogee, that's one thing that I thought was really cool. Because essentially, like I said before, APIs are software products, right? And we want to treat them as such. Um, and so, yeah, so Apogee is just a really great pro product. Um, any other questions, comments, or concerns? If not, man, you guys have been an amazing audience. I hope I didn't bore you guys to death. I saw, saw we had 26 people when we got 17 now. So hopefully I didn't bore, bore, bore you guys too much. But I do know people have other obligations. But thank you um, for watching my presentation. Also, uh, we also have what's called Google Cloud Innovators. So the Innovators Program gives developers and practitioners the latest updates and access to technologies. Uh, so it's like a global group. If you want to join that, you can scan this code and um, get access to that link as well. And if there's nothing else, I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. I'll turn it back over to you, Stacey. All right. Thanks, Emmanuel. That was, that was a great uh, presentation. So uh, if you just release the sharing, I'll, I'll start mine again. Uh, and then we're, uh, we'll just wrap it up uh, quickly. Okay, how do I release the sharing? Uh, just at the share screen, you uh, you should have like a stop sharing. Oh, my bad. All right, there you go. Is that cool? Uh, and somebody said the presentation was handsomely enlightening. So I think Man, that's I, a great comment. I appreciate it. That's a very refreshing comment. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I will actually put those links in the chat. Give me just a moment. The links I had in my presentation. I'll yep. put those in the chat as well. Yeah, and I'll uh, I'll cut and paste them also, so that way uh, when we uh, I can actually put them in the recap of the event in our event page, um, so that way people don't lose uh, don't lose those links because there's it's always uh, super useful. Uh, to, so just gonna while uh, Emmanuel pastes things, we're just gonna wrap things up. Uh, thank you for that. I'm just gonna make sure I capture them, and I'll put it in a little uh, document so that we don't lose them. Perfect, there you go. So thanks for sharing those. Uh, so yeah, so just uh, wrapping things up. So um, quickly, uh, if you're not on our Slack channel, uh, we're there, even though like we're, we're, we're also shifted to Discord because um, we're with Slack, we're only 30 days. So, uh, you can join us also on Discord, so Slack uh, and Discord. Uh, if you're a gamer, you already have Discord in place. Uh, so uh, next 24 is like super close. Uh, Emmanuel mentioned he's going, I'm going. I know Boris is going also. So at least we'll be able to meet up there. Uh, meet people in real life is also awesome. Uh, it's in Vegas, uh, not in San Francisco anymore. And it's April 9 to 11. So following this future event, Things won't stay in Vegas because, yes, it's in Vegas. We're going to bring that information back and probably have a next event, which is around the next 24 recap or extended, which is part of the GDG program. So we'll have uh, Googlers, hopefully people from the community that can actually say, hey, I want to talk about this topic. And then we just kind of like sum it up for, uh, for everybody. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to actually talk um, and uh, present like what you're doing on GCP, you have the QR code there. You can do a talk proposal. Uh, if you don't want to fill that up, you just want to hit me up on LinkedIn, be my guest. Um, it's more than happy to connect and, um, you know, have you uh, present uh, the um, whatever topic you have in mind in regards to GCP. Um, also, for those in the chat who wants to connect with Emmanuel, you just put his link in the LinkedIn uh, in the chat. So, question everybody said yes where's the recording as soon as we're wrapping th things up uh Bevy is gonna the substance machine is gonna go on and just produce uh, a, the video file i just need to process it and upload it into the platform um and uh, it's gonna end up on our youtube channel 
So yeah, give us an hour tops uh, and it's going to be there. So, and on this, I want to thank everyone uh, for attending. Uh, it was, uh, it was a great chat again, Manuel. Thank you for your time. Uh, it was uh, it was really great. It's one of those topics. It's really specific, but uh, it's something that's really helpful for other people. Now we actually have something on recording within our chapter for GDG Cloud Montreal or around APG. Um, and looking forward for your demo. Uh, just like I said, just send me the link. I'll put it in the event page so people can click and go and see it. So. On this, I'll stop sharing and I'll stop the recording. And again, thank you everyone. And I'll see you in Q2, 100% uh, talking about what's ha what happened in Vegas at Next24. So thanks everyone. Bye-bye.